All right, tons of people want to weigh in, 877-996-6369. Let's start with the Outkick VIP. Danny G, fire away. It's Shane in New York. Shane, what you got? Clay, before I unpack this call, let me first give a welcome to Nashville shout-out to the big, sexy Whitlock. I just uh, I hope he negotiated his contract and open bar tab to your establishment downtown. <laughs> we got to get open downtown, first of all. But, yes, I appreciate that. Uh, listen, I listened to Coward's interview with Will Kane over the weekend. Um, Will is great, by the way. He's killing it on Fox and Friends. You had an awesome interview with him a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he was great again with Cowan over the weekend. Let me, let me highlight one key perspective that idiots like Drew Brees are failing to grasp regarding um, Jacob. Empathy versus logic. Logic requiring to look at the facts and break it down before you choose empathy and rush to it. Breeze, who we all know, first backed down his statement. He would never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the USA. And we all know damn well that's how he really feels, and he was spot on with that. And now, with Jacob Blake, he's going right to the empathy route of wearing his name on, yeah, it's and it's, it's utter teammates. it's utterly ridiculous. On, yes. on, on, yeah, with the rest with the rest teammates on his helmet. This guy, as you started to mention earlier, um, has a felony warrant for sexual assault, trespassing, domestic abuse with this gal from back in July, and was back at her place breaking a restraining order the day he was shot. Um, as reported by the New York Post. And he had been terrorizing this gal, I guess, for the past eight years. And his aunt, who is black, said he should have been shot not seven times, but 50 times. So for, I don't know about the, the last – thanks for the call. I don't know about the last bit. But the first part of that story about Jacob Blake is, according to reports, true. Yet, you don't hear it anywhere. And all the sports leagues that shut down, nobody is even mentioning Jacob Blake's name at all. It's as if they just went radio silent all at once when all of the details came out. And it looks bad for sports leagues to have set the precedent that we are going to shut down when there is a 15 or 20 second video that we don't like. We're going to take your calls for the rest of this segment and then to open up at the top of hour three so you can weigh in 877-996-6369. Who's up next? Oh, we got Eddie in Texas. Eddie, what you got for me? Have the phones have the phones officially failed us? No, Dub? I think I think we're fine. I think Eddie just had a lapse there. Uh, let's try. Uh, we got Pastor Page in Miami, Florida. All right, we're going down to Miami to Pastor Page. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Uh, enjoy your show. Appreciate um, that. I'm one. Of, I'm one of the few that's on the other side. Uh, I'm conservative. I'm a registered Democrat. However, I, I I vote my conscience, and when I tell people that I support Trump. Uh, I don't look at the personal part of it. I look at the, what the party stands for. And in this situation, uh, I, my grandson just the other day had gotten stopped or detained by the police officer. They got a call that a building where they just come out of McDonald's had been attempted to be breaking into two young gentlemen. Uh, the thing that feared me was that my grandson, who was an honor student, goes to parochial school, honor classes, has a tendency sometimes of challenging um, if he thinks he's right, if he knows he's right. But he said to me, he said, Granddaddy, I know, I remember what you said, that if they're the authority, if I just cooperate, if I just cooperate in a matter of time, and unfortunately, in, in the middle of the detainment, they got a call that there was a surveillance camera and it wasn't him. But if these people just cooperate, but that's the thing you say. I mean, we have to be honest. Most of these people, if not all of them, are, it has to do with a criminal action or something that brings that out. 
And I'm glad that you're saying. I, you know, on my, on my, I do a Facebook. Can you live. can you hang with us? Can you hang with us? We gotta we gotta go to break here, and I'd like to continue the conversation. Eight seven seven nine nine six six three six nine. Everybody should know we have a hard out at the end of the hour, so I got to make sure that I hit my break here. But we're gonna keep taking your calls. Hopefully, the Pastor will stick with us. We are taking your calls. Eight seven seven nine nine six six three six nine. This is Outkick on Fox Sports Radio. We have opened up the phone lines, 877-996-6369. Why in the world, as the Jacob Blake story and information has come out, the fact that there was a felony sexual assault warrant for him, the fact that a black woman called police, that's why they were there. She was asking for protection from uh, his trespassing uh, and that, uh, that he potentially was armed with a knife. All of that news that has come out since the Pro Sports League shut down, as all of that information has come out, including the fact that he was tased, that he resisted arrest, and that he fought with officers, all of a sudden that story is just vanishing. I'm allowing people to react to why in sports everybody talks about it and then they just vanish when stories like these suddenly have details that challenge the existing narrative or the popular narrative. When we went to break, uh, we were talking to a pastor down in Miami, uh, and we bring him back up. Our, uh, thanks for waiting with us. Are you a pastor of a church right now? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and so you were talking about your grandson and the fact that he had been pulled over. And yesterday on the program, I said, and I'm curious if, if you've been saying this to your own kids and your grandkids, I tell my kids, and I would tell everybody's kids out there, whether they're white, black, Asian, or Hispanic, If you are detained by the police, listen to them. Almost every bad result that occurs between a police officer and a suspect or anybody else that they are questioning has to do when somebody is resisting arrest in some form or fashion. And I tell my kids, hey, listen to dad. I'm a lawyer. If you get arrested and you didn't deserve to get arrested, you have an opportunity to challenge that in a court of law. We can get that resolved. What we can't get resolved is is if things become so violent and dangerous that you are in some way harmed or a police officer is harmed. And so I think telling people not to resist arrest is incredibly important, but this ties in with the story of your grandson. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yes, um, as a matter of fact, he's actually in high school. Um, And what happened is he had gotten off the activity bus and um, in another city in Fort Lauderdale, he's his school is in Hollywood. Um, and my my fear was that not only because he they think they're right when they're young, but he knew he was right because he wasn't even there. But he said, I remember what you told me, to cooperate. Doesn't matter their actions. And this is the amazing thing about the black community is we were raised that you respect the authority. And it doesn't matter if mom or daddy or whoever is wrong. But one thing I would, I would ask you to do, and this is what I do at the end of my, the end of my service, um, because I don't preach from a uh, religious point of view, uh, uh, wisdom and teaching. I put the challenge out there to say, if I'm wrong, let's sit down and discuss it. And this is maybe the reason why you haven't gotten a call back from one athlete who not only almost risked their season, I'm glad Kendrick Meek said, listen, why would you, it, they almost forfeited their season on something that ended up being totally embarrassing. And I, I say to him, even when I heard with Nick Cannon and, and the receiver for Philadelphia, Jackson, I said, you guys don't even know what you're talking about uh, from, a, from a, a religious point of view. So I said, listen, let me ask you this question. The Jewish community who came over here started with nothing. Not only are you dealing with uh, uh, the, the uh, anti-Semitic attitude today, but have experienced the Holocaust where they had nothing. Why have they rose to prominence and we're still where we at? Because if you don't change your way of thinking and if you stay locked into this or whatever has happened, which I am not going to get into it, but I said people don't even realize what's happened to us is more spiritual minded because we stay in this ignorance. But I do put the challenge out there, so I appreciate your show that gives the platform. So why are they not calling now? It was Thank you for the call. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, sorry. It was, it, was totally, it was totally embarrassing when I found out that this guy not only had a criminal record, 
I mean, you can see him walking away. That means he was resisting the police officer. And at my school also, listen, I'm, I'm ex-military. I'm going to my 23 years of teaching. There's a, some of us out there are upstanding uh, people, and I'm not saying that to indict anyone else. But I, I, because we have also friendly comes in, they say, listen, there is a rule. I don't know if it's written or unwritten, but they say, listen, and I understand this from being military. When you're in a split-moment uh, decision, once they're posing a threat, all bets are off. You can't tell me what my actions should be because what if he's a uh, marksman with a knife and he can throw it real quick? We just seen where a guy just walked in, the police walked in, after this guy, and he fired a shot, and thank the Lord he had his vest on. So I appreciate what you do. Um, I do teach from uh, uh, um, Facebook Live under Ophir R. But I, I open up these questions to not get into a spiritual mindset, but let's get into civil uh, to understand even these guys who make this ridiculous statement about the Jewish community and, and who we are, whatever. None of them spoke spiritually. None of them spoke uh, 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 historically. And yet you make an indictment against people. And, and even and when Nick Cannon and, and Jackson make this statement, the Jewish community wasn't opposing us. So why would you say that and you say I'm ignorant? So I appreciate what you do. Keep doing what you do. Matter of fact, I'm going to hire you because even as I grew up, I've been I've been always ostracized. I've been called white boy. Um, I had a friend that was being jumped. I, I defended him. My friends turned on me. Um, I do the right thing. And I tell people when you want to look at me and think that I'm on the other side. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna hire uh, my lawyer you because I want to ask the question is. Why haven't we gotten our 40 acres in a mule? And I say that kind of jokingly. So I do, I do stand for the black community, but I do it from a righteous point of view. Thank you for the call. Uh, appreciate the call. Look, I just I think we could learn so much if we had athletes and teams, instead of demonizing police, if they said, hey, let's not have anyone ever resist arrest in this country and see what happens. Just think about it. It would be a revolutionary thing. And I say that from a lawyer perspective. You're unlikely to win an argument as a private citizen with a police officer who has decided to arrest you. I don't think it happens very often where a police officer is like, hey, okay, I'm going to cuff you, and you talk your way out of getting handcuffed. By the point where you are being arrested, there is nothing that you can do to convince a police officer not to arrest you. Now, when you're being detained, that's where the police officer is running your license, checking your plates, everything else. You don't want to resist arrest then, but you just interact respectfully with a police officer. And by the way, I would say the same thing about police trying to interact respectfully with with the people that they are policing. But almost every incident of violence involving a police officer and someone they are arresting is occurring because of a resisted arrest. Not all of them. There are always outliers. There are always situations outside of the realm. But the vast majority of them involve people resisting arrest. You just didn't resist arrest None of these stories happen. If Jacob Floyd, uh, Jacob uh, Blake had just been arrested and not fought with officers, he wouldn't have gotten shot. If you watch the long form version of the George Floyd arrest, if he had just stayed in the back of that police car, none of the final moments would have ever happened. He refused to go into the police car. If you watch the long-form version of that arrest, resisting arrest is making things way more dangerous for officers and for the people being arrested. If you get arrested, and I say this as a lawyer, if you get arrested unjustly, you get your day in court to prove that you were arrested unjustly. The only way you prove that you were treated and arrested unjustly is by being alive and by being able to tell your story. That's why I tell my kids, don't fight with police officers. That's what I was taught growing up. 
And now we've created this tension between officers and suspects. And I think athletes are making it worse such that violence, instead of becoming less likely, is becoming more likely. Taking your calls, 877-996-6369. Who's up next? We got Jim in Cincinnati. Jim, what's up? How are you? Excellent. Okay. Um, I believe, um, I think the athletes are wrong. I think the media is wrong. Um, I think Black Lives Matter. I agree Black Lives Matter, but I believe that their cause is basically 20 years too late. Um, They should have done this when Congress passed the laws basically putting away African-Americans for long prison sentences for petty crimes. The people who have been killed in the past several years, I think all have deserved what they got except for George Floyd. You don't, as you said, you don't disobey police. You don't know what weapons they have in a car. Too many officers have been killed over the years from not only uh, black assailants, but also white. The people today trying to plead their case for Black Lives Matter are using only talking points. Whenever you try to nail them down for facts, they can never come up with anything. They only come up with something of empathy, something filled with emotion, which when you start arguing points with emotion, you fail. Bring up the the facts. Thank Thank you for the call. I, I, I try to say, look, I understand that people respond emotionally to many things. In fact, social media is effectively an emotional medium. Having phones in our hands all the time has made us more emotional as a society. Because most of the time, if you think about the way emotion works, your emotions get surging, and then as your logic starts to work with your emotion, your emotion comes down. And what usually, that's why people walk away when they get into an argument. You walk away, you reconsider, you probably come back, and you don't behave as emotionally as you have. Well, the phone, you pull it out, and you emotionally react all day long. And they've played us for fools at Facebook, at Twitter, at Instagram, Snapchat. All these different social media devices are specifically designed to play to our emotion. How many people liked my post? What did that person say about my post? It's all emotion-based. And so what happens is we've got a constant conflict between emotion and logic, between facts and feelings, and feelings win on social media by and large. And what happens is a lot of times the facts end up canceling out the feelings And I think that, to a large extent, is what's happening with the Jacob Blake case. But in the Jacob Blake case, by the time the facts come out, the people who reacted emotionally don't ever circle back around and say, oh, by the way, maybe I shouldn't have reacted as emotionally as I did before because the emotional action has already happened. And once the facts come out, they conflict with the emotion, so people just pretend it didn't happen. That's what's happened with Jacob Blake. No athlete is coming out and saying, oh, by the way, I think we overreacted. Clearly, they overreacted based on the facts. I can't imagine that any WNBA player today would be like, yeah, we, sh- we definitely made the right decision when we wrote Jacob Blake's name on T-shirts and posed before we knew that he was wanted for felony sexual assault, before we knew that the reason why police were trying to arrest him was because a woman who had accused him of raping her, felony sexual assault, that she was asking for police protection. It's crazy. Who's up next? We got Frank in Texas. Frank, what you got? Good morning. Yeah, fire away. Yeah, Yeah, um, well, you kind of took took the words out of my mouth, uh, what you were saying earlier about uh, social media. That's actually what I was uh, called in for. I just think that the, um, I just think that that just shows the times that we're living in. Um, that you know the social media, you know they, you know what social media puts out. A lot of uh, I guess I don't say uneducated, but people that just don't want to think. Um, 
you know, they just perceive everything to be true. And, um, you know, athletes included, you know, athletes, you know, a lot of these guys are, you know, 20, 21 years old, you know, and they growing up in this age of social media and they overreact, you know. And uh, so I got two parts to that. I mean, I used to be part of the problem. You know, I used to, I, I was in prison myself. I was in prison for three years. I'm talking like 20 years ago. Um, but the way I changed my life around was I stopped blaming others for the things that happened to me and just took responsibility for my actions. And that's the way that I changed my life around. And by me giving back to the community, I'm giving back through my kids because I want my kids to be productive members of society. So I'm just hang up and listen. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. I want to keep getting as many calls as we can before we go to break and go to Petros Papadakis. How many people do we have left that want to weigh in, Dub? We got two more left. Let's go to Chris in Los Angeles. Chris, fire away. Hey, real quick, you have really good calls. Uh, everybody's taking the words right out of my mouth. You're doing a great job. You should be on Cowherd's uh, hours out here on the West Coast. That's it, Clay. Be good. Appreciate that. We got a great list of shows all day long, every day on Fox Sports Radio. Don Martin and Scott Shapiro, wide variety of perspectives. Not going to agree with every single thing that every host says, but we've got the best national sports talk radio lineup in the country, and frankly, I think of all time that's rolling right now. Who's up next? Yeah, last one here. We got Rick in Indiana. Rick, what you got for me? Hey, good morning, Clay. Hey, uh, a couple of points. Is one, uh, Dana. Uh, Eddie had talked earlier about uh, special forces and SEALs you know, kind of looking into the police force. You know, as a former Green Beret, it's not that uh, special operations uh, individuals might not be good at policing, uh, but it is important to note that uh, work on a very strict you know, set of rules about engagement, and there's not a lot of negotiation ability when it comes to special operations soldiers. I know I'm not a diplomat. Yeah. Uh, so when they so in other words, you wouldn't want to be pulling somebody over for having a broken taillight. Absolutely not. I mean, I'm, I'm given, uh, you know, I, not that I couldn't be trained different. I'm just saying it's not a given that you are good in the military. You would be a good cop. That's yeah. all I'm, you know, saying on that. The other thing, you know, I want to. I, I actually work for Ball State. Uh, and I just want to, you know, weigh in a little bit about the Mac real quick. It's yeah. one of the things about these teams canceling uh, these these divisions, sort of canceling college football. They got kind of stuck in a rut uh, about sort of playing COVID versus not playing COVID. A great example is, you know, like if Ball State wants to go you know, up to Mount Pleasant to play a football game, whereas they normally would have taken five school buses, they might have to take ten because of social distancing. Yeah. And in the Big Ten, that's not a big deal, but in the MAC, that's a huge deal. Five more buses every travel game is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah how, do you, how do you get 99 guys in a locker room that you can only put 33 in because of square footage, you know, for a uh, halftime, et cetera? So a lot more things maybe went into that decision than just, hey, we're not going to play. Thanks That's for all I got. And uh, appreciate everything. Ball State's most famous alum, Jason Whitlock. Uh, I'll get to that in a sec. But I would say, yeah, look, I think the smaller conferences, there's less – disagreement over some of their decisions not to play. I think most people are focused on the Big Ten by far, then the Pac-12, and then people would say, oh, well, the MAC and the Mountain West, right? I understand if you're a fan of a MAC team or a Mountain West team, but those budgets for them are much smaller, so the costs overall from trying to cope with COVID could be much more substantial in many respects there.